Hi, my name is Justin. I'm the developer of Pur Rocket, an iOS space game with cats. And I listen to the One Off Gaming Podcast. You can find a link to download my game at facebook.com slash purrocket. One of gaming is behind me. Let me get in beast mode. If you wanna try me, you don't need a cheat code. Can't take this who I be to you. It's Mr. Hero, legendary adversary. Flows consider loot though. I'm a super saiyan. I got dragon balls. I wouldn't lie. You might think I'm playing when I'm saying I can really fly. When I'm on the track, you feel the energy I'm pushing out. Put me on the map. One of game is who I'm talking about. I'm the rapping master chief. Epic to say the least. Contain the hero better. Etch that in your memory. And so the one up gaming for the show. I'll contain the hero is really gonna show up. Hello and welcome to the One Up Gaming Podcast, episode 142. It's just me, David, this week. I'll be going over quickly what I've been playing and some news, things like that. And then we'll cut into the interview that we did with Nicole Hunt. And then we'll just come back and we'll just do the goodbyes as normal. So it won't be that long this week, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. So, <clears throat> first of all, I must say, I was a massive Heroes fan, you know, the TV show. Series 1 was probably one of my all-time favourite TV shows ever. I actually adored the first season, where it was, you didn't quite know who was the bad guy, what was happening, and it just was brilliant. And, yes... The preceding series did dip in quality, but I think that's also to do with the fact that, for me, the the reason why the first season worked is, you know, the the actual Sila, the main bad guy. You didn't know he was the bad guy till quite late into it, sort of thing, and it was really good to sort of get the backstories of people while, you know, not knowing much about them. But as the series went on and on, for me, the worst character of the heroes was Claire Bennett. Because her powers was, although it was a good power, you know, she can't get, well, she feels pain, but she can't die. So she can get crumpled up into bits and then she can pull herself back together. And while that's all good, she couldn't fight or she couldn't, you know, do anything really. And she was so annoying. But because... Everyone thought she was, I don't know if she's a good actor or not, but everyone thought she was really cute and good looking. So the show started to focus on her as the main story. And it just lost its way, I thought. But this Heroes Reborn, this new series, I've watched the first couple of episodes. And although it does look as though it's not got the budget that it used to have. But it does seem better because it's all... Apart from Noah Bennett, who's like the main guy in it, who's had his memory wiped. And even on the first episode, when he's saying his daughter was dead, I was like, she's not dead. But they probably can't afford her to be until maybe right at the end when she does a cameo or something. But yeah, it's looking good, looking quite interesting. I'm really enjoying it. Another thing that I must mention is I'm a big Formula One fan. And... 
I recorded the like the is it Ted's notebook or whatever it was called on Sky the Sky Sports F one channel every night where he's like half an hour of going over all the that day's testing of the Formula One sort of stuff and it's very interesting looking at all the pictures, diagrams and all the new bits and bobs added to each car which is very, very interesting to me and I'm so looking forward to the new season and hopefully it won't be too long now. So that's the TV stuff out of the way. So I, I guess I'll go through a couple of the games that I played. So I got sent a code for The Walking Dead Michonne, you know, The Walking Dead, I think it's a Telltale mini series or something it's called. I don't even know how many episodes there is. But I managed to get about 20 minutes, 45 minutes into the game and it seems okay. It's just, I don't quite feel the rapport with her at Michonne. I just don't think she's a great character. But we'll see how it sort of carries on and goes. And last month or the month before there was the Xbox Games for Gold. I think it's called Zeros or Hero. It's basically Z then Heroes. So I don't know if it's the silent Z or Z Heroes or something stupid. But basically it's a side scrolling beat em up. It seemed okay but I think with it being fully three D, I think they've tried to have the camera a bit instead of normal where you can actually see the full screen and you only go up and down the screen a little bit. But with it being like a full 3D game, the camera angle seems a bit higher and wider angled. And it, I don't know, it just seemed weird. It looked really cheap as well. Like it is an indie game. You know, it's not got the detail that you'd expect for an Xbox One sort of game. But it played alright, which... At the end of the day, that is all you can really ask. The last game that I played was the free game for the iPhone. And it was Hopico, Hopico, something stupid like that. Basically, it's like a fast-paced puzzle sort of game. Where you have to either... If you tap the screen, your little character shoots off at... On whatever platform it is on, whatever angle that platform is, you go parallel to, you know, from that. So you're basically perched on it. So as that's spinning, if you tap it, whatever angle that is at, you just shoot off in a straight line from that. Or you can swipe from the platform to the place where you want to go. And it'll shoot off at an angle towards where you're going. And there's, you know, there's bits that you have to avoid. If you hit little bits and bobs, then you basically die. You've got to restart. Each level's made up of five puzzles. And if you get to, say, the puzzle four and die, or even on the puzzle five and die, you have to reset right the way back to the first puzzle within that five. Which... I'm not sure if that's good or not, because to me that's artificially extending the life of that game, because sometimes with these sort of games, like puzzle sort of games, it's you don't really know what you're doing until it's a bit of trial. So you might get right the way up to the fifth one, and then you've got to go all the way back through it a few times just to get used to it. And the last game that I wanted to have a go at was I got into the, the beta for Trackmania, Turbo, so I was excited. I love Trackmania. I, I think it was Trackmania 2 that I might have even been the original one for the PC that I used to play religiously every night. I used to love that game. Um, but with this one, I downloaded it, waited until I got the email saying the servers are now up, you can play it. So I actually came home from work, turned it all on, loaded it up. Got to the title screen, watched the video, clicked the A button or the X, whatever the hell the button is, to go next. Then it went on to the thing saying, this is a beta, things might not work, blah, 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 blah. Clicked it for OK, accept. And then 
it just flashed black and then went back to the Xbox One home screen. So for the last three or four days I've been doing it and it just crashes back to the home screen every single time. And I believe the beta is now finished so unfortunately I will not get a chance to play that game. Until the full game comes out in, I think it's like next month I think it comes out. So that is everything that I've been playing this week. So we will have a quick break. And then, I say a quick break, I will put a jingle in. And then we'll come back and then we'll have a quick chat with Nicole Hunt from I Fight Bears. And his most famous game is probably Fist of Awesome, which two or three years ago was everywhere. All the like IGNs and GameSpot, you know, they were interviewing him and it just blew up big time. And we had a good, good chat. He's a great guy. So back after these quick messages. Chaostrophic.com, the most viral videos, images, and news from all over the internet. We find it so you don't have to. Get the latest and greatest chaos from around the world. We give you more of what you want, boobs, and less of what you don't. Politics. But don't think it's all about us. We're all user-driven. Come on in and join the fun and see content from all around the world from people just like yourself. Chaostrophic.com. We find it so you don't have to. Up next on the show, we got a treat for you. Here is this week's interview. And we're back with 1UP Gaming. And this week, we've got... Well, I guess I'll just sort of say you can introduce yourself. Okay. So, who are you and what do you do? As you gulp a big, massive bottle of wine. <laughs> Um, hi there, I'm Nicole Hunt. Um, I'm a computer game developer. I have been for a long time, but recently I started um, going alone. So I used to work for big companies and I work for myself. Um, I started a company called I Fight Bears, who our first title was um, a game called Fist of Awesome, which is a time travelling lumberjack em up where you punch bears in the face to save humanity, which was like way more successful than it needed to be. So thanks to that, I've developed a lot of um, good relationships and I'm working full-time for myself in my shed in the back garden making more weird games with a kind of crazy sense of humour. So, I mean, the first question I've got is basically, you just basically said, so with Fist of Awesome doing so well, was it actually more than you could ever dream how well it did? Um, well, I could definitely dream it doing better. Let's let's not get carried away. It did well. It it definitely did better than I possibly even thought it would do. Um, so this this of awesome basically meant I could not work for two years if I wanted to, which is pretty pretty impressive. But um, at the same time, Fist of Awesome did incredibly well. My wife got pregnant, and so we made the decision, or I made the decision, um, to not. Um, kind of go 100% full blown in the computer game thing and said take that money and buy a house so we bought a house and um, I almost thought I'd have to give up the kind of indie computer game dream because all of the money for Festival Awesome at that point I then just go into this house and I still needed to make money to pay for rent and pay the mortgage and um, buy food and stuff like that but fortunately um, I've, I found um, a little kind of unexpected partnership with a animation company in London called T&G's which are two guys called Jamie and Liam and um, and their friend Dimitri who um, has a company called Asian Games who fund all of T&G's endeavours recently in computer games and so uh, and we kind of all got together and they were making games with those guys so I get paid to make awesome fun computer games and it's all kind of worked out amazingly well so we've got a house I get to still make computer games um, and it's it's a very nice setup. And so we just announced our most recent game. So we made a game called 8-Bit Waterslide last year, which, again, did probably better than it even deserves to do. But it's a, it's a really fun um, fun kind of infinite runner type game. But now we're making something super exciting and super ambitious. Um, we're making what we hope will be the best racing game on mobile, if not on any platform ever. 
and it's called Maximum Car. So even if the game doesn't work out, we have the best name for a racing car game of all time. <laughs> so, I mean, just going back to like your company, I Fight Bears. Yeah. Now, I know it's a great like, pun and great little joke, but do you ever think now you wish you had a more serious sort of name, or do you still think it's... Oh, God, no. No, I think it's absolutely <laughs> perfect. I've, I've, never, I've never really wanted to be a professional person. and like, I don't mind being professional as in being good at something, but I don't want to be formal. Um, and even now, so, like... I'll, I'll like contact press, talk about games and stuff, and instead of like very like really formal press releases saying, "Was well, I'm announcing the official announcement of this game? It's going to be a, a, a dungeon crawler, and blah blah." Have these features a hundred levels? Like that's just so boring to me. And like doing things kind of like by the book, the way people expect things to be done, is not my style at all. I'd rather be completely unique and try and take people by surprise and do stuff that stands out. And if that means I get to name my company, I fight bears. Instead of Nickel Hunt Games Incorporated, I'm totally going to call my company I Fight Bears. I, I don't regret it for a second. So, you, you've already said the Tea and Cheese. Is that their, yeah. their full sort of That's name? That's their full title, yeah, Tea and Cheese. So, who are they and why should we care? Um, there are two guys called Liam and Jamie. Um, you should care because they're incredibly talented, incredibly funny guys. Um, and before they made computer games, um, they started in film school, making cool little short animations. And one of their ga- one of their animations they made was um, a, basically a fake computer game called Eight Bit Water Slide. <clears throat> and so they made like just a little video for YouTube with this little kind of character called Tipler who went on a crazy adventure using stop motion. Um, and it was so funny. This this little guy going in a water slide, getting set on fire, getting stomped on. Getting high, super mega hyper boost, so he goes so fast, and he's like barely like holding on. It's really funny. It's got like about half a million views or something, which is pretty good for YouTube, I hear. And so from that, um, their friend Dimitri offered to fund development of an entire computer game. And because like what the, the stuff they produce is so funny and so characterful, I think that's that was such an awesome idea. And eventually, I got involved to help finish off this bit war slide game. And and we just had it off, like because I I like to think I've got a bit of a sense of humor when it comes to like making computer games and stuff, and they've got a sense of humor for making films and animation and sound and music. They're incredible at doing that as well. And so this the the the, the three of us together making a game was, it was brilliant. It was one of the best experiences I've had. And it was I came in near the end of the project as well. Like I I, I did a lot of work on it, but the the game was already there by the time I showed up. Whereas now we're starting from scratch and um, we'll have like just times where like the, the two guys will come over across my office and we'll sit together and we'll just like tell each other bad jokes um, and just say like if we could make the best game ever, what would that game be? And that's that's what we're trying to do. So, I mean, who actually approached who with this game? Um, well, so they, yeah, I guess they approached me. Um, the origi- originally, they were talking about um, making a kind of kart racing game based on some of their characters they've already designed for their animations. But the more we talked about it and the more we um, kind of like thought about what our inspirations were and what, what would actually stand out and be a unique game that hasn't been done before, um, we started going more towards Burnout. Have you ever played Burnout? Yes. Burnout 3 in particular, for me, was like just one of the highlights of... Um, my console gaming and so we thought what if because no one's ever done like a good burnout game on mobile like there's 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 really hardcore sims and there's really really simple like just almost lane switching racing games we're like what if we do something in the middle so it's 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 arcadey but it's also not overly simple but it's not so complicated you get bogged in the menu system it's just something that's pure and action and fun um and we went well let's do that then and so we started off making what we hoped would be Something like Crossy Road meets Burnout, but it's turned into something else entirely. It's it's, its own beast now. It is genuinely the best game I've ever worked on, and it's nowhere near finished. It's yeah, I'm very very excited about working on Maximum Car. Yeah, I mean, my understanding of the Burnout franchise, everyone loved Burnout Paradise, but I hated that game with a passion. Well, the thing about Burnout Paradise, Burnout for me was, Three, I loved. 
Yeah, like Burnout TV for me was just like I think it was the peak. After that, like they they did, they added things, but those things didn't always add to the experience. And especially for me, like Burnout Paradise looks beautiful, and when you're racing, it's incredible. But there's a lot of time when you're not racing; you're just driving between races. And for me, that is not it's not why I play the game. And so what we, what we want to do in Maximum Car is literally get rid of all of the kind of cruft, all of the UI screens, all of the stuff in between. Just get rid of all of that and have as much of the game just be, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. I'm having so much fun. My eyes are on fire. The smoke coming out of my nostrils. Wah! And just get rid of everything else. Just If it's not fun, it doesn't go in. And just try and make a pure gaming experience. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that sort of game works so much better. As you say, you don't have to add the full open world. You don't have to add all the traffic lights and all the other bits and bobs mm-hmm. and just get it simple circuit fast and get people ramming into each ev- everyone else. And it's just, that's all you need. Yeah, well, we're lucky because we're, we're coming to this, like this will be the first iteration of this game. So we don't have to add more things to keep people interested. We can just choose the core set and make that as perfect as we can. But me, when it comes to like Maximum Car Five, I'll be like putting in traffic lights and open worlds. But well, we have to put in something. We can't. We can't just. We can't. We've got to justify this game. But right now, we have that freedom of just making the most perfect, pure core of a game. So why the name Maximum Car? Because it's everything. The, the the name honestly is the entire game has come from that name. The cool thing about Maximum Car as a name is it just sounds a bit wrong. It's it sounds a bit stupid, a bit kind of overblown. Maximum Car, like maximum velocity or something like that. That sounds like just a really intense thing. But Maximum Car just sounds like yes, what? And that's what we try to do. We're trying to make a racing game which is like super macho, but at the same time, it's also like just stupid and funny and humorous, and it takes you by surprise. Because most racing games, they are what they say they are. Maximum car, something a bit different. So, I mean, looking at the announcement trailer, it looks like the graphical style of like a blocky road sort of thing, mm. uh, where it's a bit blocky and square. Yeah. But to me, the game actually looks like a cross between like an Outrun and Burnout. Yeah. Would that be similar to what you? sort of say it, it's kind of like yeah like we're, we're inspired by quite a few classic games um, but the graphical style is for two reasons the graphical style is very basic because it means we can create lots of cars fairly quickly because we want to have a huge variety of content in the game and if we focus on just making high quality cars there's not enough of us and we don't have enough time to make many high quality cars so we make stuff that um, is characterful looks cool but it's quick for us to make. So that's one of the, that's the main reason we chose the, the kind of like 3D pixel art voxel style. But when it comes to gameplay, I'd say we're very much inspired by games like Chase HQ, the Burnout franchise, Outrun, stuff that's pure arcade. Like, I'm, I, I wouldn't say we're taking anything from Gran Turismo, I wouldn't say we're taking anything from Forza. It's very much the kind of core arcade racing experience um, and I want to have one thing, one thing that's different to a lot of games is we want the kind of like um, combat element in it but not combat as of like guns as of combat as in smashing cars into other cars and making them explode because there's nothing cooler than stuff exploding and there's one thing I've learned from the Fast and Furious franchise is cars exploding is awesome <laughs> so I mean I'm just wondering when will the game be announced for like Steam and the next generation consoles? We're focusing on iOS and Android to begin with, mainly because we understand those markets and we're confident we can do the best racing game on iOS and Android. Because, to be honest, we're already better than every game that we've played. Whereas on, on console and PC, we're going to have to raise our game a little bit. Not much. We're pretty high already. But we've got to raise it a little bit just to beat everything else. So we're kind of holding that back until um, we've got the iOS and Android versions done. But I really strongly believe that this game will be on everything um, by next year. Because it's too good not to be. So, I mean, is it virtual buttons or is it like... 
tilt controls. Well, get like um. So I hate uh, virtual controls. If you if you played Fist of Awesome, there's no like kind of buttons you've got to press. There's no little joysticks. It's all based on gestures and swiping and stuff. So you never have to look at your thumbs to know how to play the game. Um, and I hate tilt controls because it's lame. <laughs> so for um. For Maximum Car, we've, we've basically tried to decide what's the most basic control scheme that we can implement, but still have a lot of variety in it. And so we're doing clever things. So um, when you're steering, it's the left and right um, side of the screens you press. So you use your thumbs, left and right, steer left and right. But there's also drifting. So when you're turning left, if you tap the right-hand side of the screen, you'll, so you'll kick at the back end and go into a big drift, which is so cool. And so when you're drifting as well, you're building boost. So when you want to use your boost, you swipe up anywhere on the screen and that activates the boost. Um, we're maybe going to implement an air brake as well so you can kind of slow down to catch cars and smash into them and stuff. But that, that's the basics. So it's all based on uh, gestures or simple button presses. There's no, um, there's no like virtual steering where you've got to tar and there's no, nothing where you have to slide your finger across the screen to control movement. It's, 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 it's very simple very instant, um, and we think is the best control scheme for um, an arcade racing game on mobile. And I, d- I don't think anyone's done it quite to the same level that we're doing it. So you say it's got like a drift mechanic. Yeah. Is it more procedural or is it like real time sort of thing? It's it's you know like it's um I'm trying to think what what game is best compared to it's it's very um yeah it's it's not like a kind of canned drift it's. It, it changes the physics slightly, so um, so you you basically kick the back end out, so you're sliding around corners sideways, but you still have full control over your car. You can still steer. Um, it's just handled slightly differently, but it feels cool. It feels like you're sliding. I used to work on um, the Colin McRae Rally games um, when I first started out in computer games, and so I used to love the, the, the feeling of drifting around corners in that game, so I've tried to get as close to that as I can, but still very arcadey and not very... It's not not true to life, but it feels right, if you know what I mean. Because, I mean, I've, my favourite like, game of all times, the Ridge Racer series. Mm. And I loved the drifting in that, which was more... You had no real control, you just started the drifting, you just went around the corner automatically. Yeah, so it's not that. You, you definitely, yeah. You're still in control. And then the spoiled hit with the, the newest Ridge Racer, which the sent out to Bugbear, and they did the drift mechanic where you actually had more control over it. But because it was too realistic for a Ridge Racer game. <laughs> yeah, and it'd be interesting to see what you think then of, um, of Maximum Car's approach. But everyone I've shown it to is like, they just think that the physics are perfect, which is really reassuring, because that's the one thing that we spend like, a significant amount of time on. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you know, I've completely blanked on the name of it, because, especially on mobile, I'll, I'll download a game, I'll play it for 20 minutes, an hour, mm. and I'll uninstall it, and then I'll download something else, because I've got a really crap phone, and it doesn't have enough memory <laughs> for anything. But there was a, a racing game released uh, maybe a few months ago that looked very much like Chase HQ. Is it a Horizon Chase? Yes. Yes. And I really did like that. Yeah, Horizon Chase is awesome. I played a lot of that game. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'd say the kind of retro aspects of Horizon Chase, the way it's kind of like arcadey and bright and ah, we have that. But the, the kind of physics and how it feels to go around cars and stuff, it's, we have a completely different kind of gameplay approach to those guys. But I do love Horizon Chase. I, I think it's a great game. Yeah, I mean, the problem I had with it, I've read some of the user reviews on the iOS, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and it was saying, oh, it's so much like OutRun, it's unbelievable, and this, that, the other. And uh, I downloaded it, and first two minutes, it's like, it's nothing like OutRun. Yeah, it's not. It's a, it's a circuit racer. It's, it's not like yeah. OutRun. Yeah, that's what... Like, maybe visually you know, a little <laughs> bit, but yeah, certainly from gameplay-wise, I wouldn't say it's overly similar. Yeah. Um, so, back to you. Would you ever shave your beard? Um, only for a heck of a lot of money, or for charity or something. Um, the good, like, I've always had a little bit of a beard, but since I started doing the whole indie game thing, I noticed I started, like, people remembered me more if I had a big beard. 
And so it's kind of become part of my image, I guess, as an indie game developer. It's like, oh, who's Nicole Hunt? Oh, he's that guy with the beard. Yep, okay, cool. I remember that guy. And so I, I quite like that. I quite like being known for having a big beard. So, um, yeah, no, that has to be a good reason for me to get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I don't have the genes for that. I just have like a bit of a clump at the bottom and a bit on the sides. I can't get the full <laughs> facial hair thing going. And I mean, I'd have a guess I'm similar sort of age to you as well. So I don't know. I'm pretty old, dude. Um, coming up thirty-five. I'm thirty. I thought I was thirty-seven, but I'm not. I'm thirty-six. <laughs> oh, see, not that far <laughs> off. So, just wondering. How often do you come back up to Scotland? Very rarely, unfortunately. Um, I've not been up this year at all. Um, I started start making an effort more to go home. But, um, we go to Ireland quite a lot because my wife's Irish. So that's where most of my travelling seems to go nowadays. It's always the case that, I mean, my girlfriend, like, she lives... Oh, God. It's only about an hour's drive from where my family lives. Mm. But whenever we go back down to England, we always go to her family. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so I mean, I don't know if you know, but the Play Expo, them sort of people, they're doing a expedition, expedition, bloody hell, an expo in Glasgow. On oh, I don't know. The, I think the first one they're doing is going to be this year at the beginning or the middle of June. Just wondering if you'd be interested in attending. Potentially. Um, we're trying to do a few different expos this year. So we're, we're definitely going to the Norwich Gaming Festival um, at the start of a- April. And that'll be the first time we show Max and McCarr in public. So that's quite exciting. Um, yeah. And after that, there's nothing actually officially planned. I'm probably going to go to Develop, which is more of a, a games industry type event in Brighton in July. But yeah, potentially. You potentially take a trip to Glasgow. So, do you ever get uh, over to the American sort of expedition? Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Expos. Um, not as much. I've been to GDC, which is the big one in San Francisco. Um, I think it's coming up actually at the start of next month. Yeah. I've been there like three times before, and it's awesome, but like it's it's a big ordeal. Like It costs a lot of money to go, and you've got to get accommodation, and you, if you go, you've got to really stay for a week, and it's it's a big undertaking. Um and so we've got like just a li- we've got a little baby just now, so I can't quite justify being away from home, especially if like there's not real need for me to be there now because I'm still developing a game. So I'm not trying to sell anything um, or look for funding or anything. So yeah, it's awesome. I, like I really enjoy doing it, but I, I I don't really get to go very often. So have you ever been to E3 or any of the big ones? No, I've not. I've only been to GDC in America. I've been to Eurogamer Expo in London quite a few times, but never like the the big kind of PAX Expos or E3 or anything. I think they've moved that back up to Birmingham for this year. Yeah, they have. It's um, NEC now, isn't it? Which, technically, it's a lot closer to me, but I could get a plane down to London for like 15 quid. Yeah. But to get to Birmingham, it's like 120. (laughs) Which is just crazy. Yeah. So, it, I don't know. I mean, I've had tickets to go for the last two or three years, but unfortunately I've had to do work and... I've, oh, no. Because, as you will know, being up in Scotland, to get all the way down to London, and you have to spend a good two, three days down there and then travel all the way back up. Mm. And, I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but, do you know the, the Megabus... Dude, I've done the Megabus. I did the Megabus from Dundee to London. It was the worst experience of my entire life. Do you know how long it takes? Like, non-stop, 11 and a half hours. 11 and a half hours in a Megabus. It was absolute torture. Me and my friend, uh, John, we went down to see Foo Fighters. But I booked, like, I booked the, the transport at the last minute, and like the flights were just so expensive. So, like, the Megabus is, like, £36 for both of us to get from Dundee to London. I said, like, I'll be fine, I'll be fine, we'll just do it. It was the worst experience. Ne- like, honestly, I would take out a loan next time to get flights. There's no way I'm doing that again. It's utter torture. It's the middle of Wait. summer, and there was no air conditioning. <laughs> just like, and you're just in this, this sweat box for 11 and a half hours, just dying. It was, oh, God, 
Yeah, anyway, so yeah, I know, I know Mega Boss. I travelled from Leeds to Birmingham, which it was only about four and a half hours. But I get travel sick so easy. Oh. So about two hours in, I couldn't move. And then the seats are literally about an inch from your face. Oh uh, yeah, there's no room. So you can't see anything. You, I'm just feeling dizzy, sick. Oh. Went down to the toilets. It didn't flush. There was no paper. There was nothing. And it was probably the worst four hours of my life. Yeah, I can believe that. I can believe that. So yeah, Megabus, amazing. Yeah, this is the worst advert ever for Megabus. <laughs> but the one thing I will say, I think the the train from Thirsk to Leeds, which is about 15, 20 minutes, cost £38. And then from Leeds to Birmingham, like four and a half hours, I think we got a return for 15 quid. It's cheap. You cannot <laughs> deny that it's cheap. But that was £15 for both of us. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It's value for money, think, though. <laughs> you really care what you I, pay for. It was £5 there and £7 back. <laughs> but, oh, that... I couldn't tell you how bad that yeah. was. That's why this time, when I went down to London to do our 60-hour webcast sort of thing, I actually went by plane, because it was only like an hour and a half on the plane. Mm-hmm. And that cost about £100 all in. And I could have got the mega bus for, I think it was like 15 quid there and back. It's so worth getting the plane. Just, <laughs> just to save your like <laughs> own physical well-being, nothing else. And I mean, doing, like, when we did the 60 hours, like, you'd think the easiest thing would be just to sit in the chair and just talk nonsense. Mm -hmm. But after three days in the same chair, you lose complete feeling of, from your, just above your knees Mm -hmm. to your, just above your waist. And you couldn't. You just have, like, do you know, you hear people that have lost a limb, like, they have, like, ghost phantom where they get itch on their arm, but they haven't got an arm. Yeah. It's like that. You, you've got, like, an itch on your on your ass or whatever, but you can't scratch it because it's all completely numb. <laughs> and it's the most uncomfortable I've ever been. And, I mean, literally, for the last three, four hours... I was walking around in circles, muttering to myself, not even knowing what the hell I was saying. <laughs> and then I sort of sat down and I fell asleep sitting up. <laughs> so I can't help but feel we've got off the topic of computer games somewhat now. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I've actually managed to go right through the questions. And the only last thing I, I had was basically... Is there any information about Maximum Car that you've not said yet that you're willing to sort of say? Or um, like I don't know, because like, like, we're still developing it. There's loads of stuff which we talk about putting in, but may never actually go in. <laughs> so I could, I could say something, but then I could do a Peter and Wall and you, it would never actually be in the game. So um, all I'm going to say is if you check, if you keep keep your eyes on MaximumCar.cool, We'll be putting cool stuff up there. Maximumcar.cool. How awesome is that? That's the website address. I did not know you got .cool websites. I was going to say, when did .cool actually come? I don't know. Because, like, <laughs> we, um, like, when I was coming to, like, doing the announcement trailer, we are like, well, we should probably get a website for this, because that's what professional people do. We're like, okay, cool. Like, let's get maximumcar.com. It's like, oh, it's taken. What? <laughs> .cool UK. Taken. What? And it's like, we could get .net. I'm like, that sounds a bit rubbish. And they were like, well, wait a second, there's some other ones. So we're just going down the list. It's like .uk, .whatever it is, blah, 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 .cool. It's like, .cool! <laughs> we can have My God, buy it! Buy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a beautiful moment. We were very excited. So was that fairly cheap on the... Yeah, it was like, it wasn't expensive. I think it was like, something like, maybe at most £30 for two years or something. Because, I mean, I know it depends on, like you say, like .com or whatever. If I wanted com, then I'd, I had to pay, I think it was about, oh, God, was it about 50 quid? 
for yeah. two years. But I got one up gaming dot code at UK because dot com was taken. Yeah. But dot code at UK, I think it was only about seven pounds for two years. Yeah, the dot code UK ones are definitely cheaper. Like I, I've got iFightBears dot code at UK because iFightBears dot com was taken by someone who's not even using it for anything. It's the most frustrating thing. But yeah, so it was it was cheaper. But I'd rather have the dot com. But now maybe I'll go back and get iFightBears dot cool. Let's make that a thing. <laughs> so. Anything you'd like people to go to, like your Twitter or the website, things like that? Yeah, um, so if you want to follow me on Twitter, please do, because every time I get a new follower, I rescue a kitten. Um, so it's <laughs> at Nickel Hunt is my Twitter, because it's really original. Um, I found bears at Code UK is my own company's address. I think we've got a Facebook page you could find somewhere. I update it once every two years, so... Keep your eyes yeah, I, d- I don't use Facebook at all. I don't know how to... I, the other day, I, I'm, I'm in a member of a group, a podcasting group, mm-hmm. and I had to ask someone else to say, on my phone, can I go into that group and put a message out, or can I only do it on the like the PC? Mm. And like, oh no, you just click here, click that, and then go into the group. It's like, show me that again, because I have no idea what you just did. So I, I don't use Facebook at all. I just use Facebook for putting pictures of my baby so my um, my friends can see. On Twitter, I just put occasionally bad jokes and self-promotion. Um, yeah, I'm not very good at social media. I enjoy it, but I'm not very good at it. I mean, I will say one thing, though, and calling the company I Fight Bears and then having your first game where you're basically punching a bear in the face, the best thing about that is the so-called major gaming press picked up on that and that helped a hell of a lot oh yeah I got a lot of attention for it um, yeah I was, I was very lucky with Fist of Awesome the fact, the fact it was so outrageous like I think nowadays it probably wouldn't even do as well as it did at the time because there's a lot of cool outrageous games like Bro Force love Bro Force there's lots of games that kind of like take things to another level with the um, outrageous humour and so I think when Fist of Awesome came along, it was one of the first to do that, um, especially with like heavily pixelated graphics and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was very, very lucky. I think it was just good timing as well on my part. So I mean, about Fist of Awesome, if you were to develop that again, but to focus on like the Steam release or a console release, what changes would you make? Um, the first thing I would do is have um, co-op. So that's one thing I regret not putting. I really wish I, I had time to put it in, but I just can't justify the time and expense it cost me just now. But if I ever come to do a sequel, I would definitely have co-op. So I'd love to have that in there. I'd love to have multiple characters for the main campaign so you can play through as a variety of characters. Because that's one thing about Fist of Awesome. It was, it was a really good experience playing through from beginning to end. But then once you'd done that, that was kind of it. There wasn't that much variety left to use. So I'd like to improve that in future versions. Um, and yeah, I just like to double down on the humour, make it even more outrageous, more funny. I, lo- I love it when I, I, I take it to expos and people would be like, they have to put down like the iPad or whatever they're playing on because they were laughing so hard. <laughs> I love that. I'd love to like just try and push that as far as I possibly can because yeah, as, as much as I like making games which are just fun to play, I also love making people laugh. So yeah, that'd be cool. More jokes. Because. It's a shame that that sort of genre of game has dried up quite a lot because back in the early 90s, Streets of Rage and my favourite, which I've blanked on now, Final Fight, Capcom, Final Fight yes. I used to love that so much. The Mega CD version was absolutely amazing. Oh, I've not played that. I need to check that out. It's the best version of it at the time. Yeah. You know, it's basically arcade perfect. Cool. And it was so good. So, I think I've nicked uh, just over half an hour of your time. And your baby has been glorious. He's so cute. He's his little hands. He's like... So, how old? He's, um, he's coming up for eight months now. He's very, very cute. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I never thought I liked kids. Uh, maybe I still don't like kids, but I love my kid. My kid is amazing. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's 
I'm one of these people that, like, I had a, it's a really bad analogy, but I had a dog, which I loved, but she was a right bitch. Like, you'd go <laughs> in the garden and plant plants, and then you'd come back in, and then she'd walk out, grab the plant, and bring it to you. <laughs> well, she's just and helping. She's like, oh, yeah, I saw you were using this thing, so maybe you want it now. That was fine for me, but unfortunately, when I split up with my ex-girlfriend and moved back home... Like, my dad used to put, like, hundreds of pounds worth of plants in the garden. And she'd just walk around, just pick every single one up, <laughs> take it to him, and he'd go ballistic. I mean, I came home from work one night, and he'd put, like, benches and wire all the way around the outskirts of the garden so she couldn't get to the plants. <laughs> but oh. to me, she was a character. She was gorgeous. Yeah. Well, he's, but, he, he's, he is really good. He doesn't destroy gardens. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> no, I mean, I think you've got that all to come. Yeah, oh, no doubt. He's he's he's, he's determined he's going to walk soon. So as soon as that happens, it's game over. All all, all of my nice things have to go away. When they get to about two, that's when you have to worry. Yes. When they get to the the, the so-called terrible twos. Yeah, I don't doubt it. He really li- like he likes having like things in his hand just so he can go like this and kind of smash them off things. So. As soon as it gets to the point where he can go away and choose those things, he starts smashing up. Yeah, game over. So, last question. Okay. The next game you do, are you going to, or have you already, which you probably have, like honoured it to your son? No, actually. Um, I, I, I was thinking actually about Max and Kai. I'm not totally to, the, um, to Jamie and Liam, but what I'd like to do. Um, I had a really good friend um, from Dundee called Stu Hogarth, who was an indie game developer, and he died last year. He had um, he had congenial heart issues. Um, yeah, and he really sadly passed away. Such a lovely guy, and um, I'd like to dedicate my next game to him because he he was one of the main guys who was so supportive of me when I first started doing this whole indie game thing. Um, so yeah, I'd like to do something to kind of. I don't know. Right. Give something back as much as I possibly can. But yeah, but, um, but check out Smiling Bag Games because there's still a few of them on the App Store and they're all awesome. That's nice to know. So, thank you for giving up your time in your nice home that you bought from getting Fist of Awesome out. Yeah. And see, kids, it can work. Making games, you can make money, you can actually have a normal life. And I tell you what, I bet it was quite expensive, a nice home just on the outskirts of London. It wasn't It wasn't cheap. It was a combination of like my Fist of Awesome money and my wife was in um, a West End show because she's an actor. So the two of us together like made this super team that was capable of getting a mortgage <laughs> for a house. Because, I don't know, I mean, where I'm from first in North Yorkshire, mm. an expensive house is about 200000 and this is how bad it is. When I was about, uh, say about 20, my brother would be about 21, 22, he bought his house for, I think it was 39,000. Wow. And then literally about three years later, he sold it for 140,000. Jeez. And now that house is like 200,000. Yeah, house prices but, are mental. It's weird being a grow up and actually knowing about this stuff. But, um,. Yeah, like, we were very lucky. Like, I don't think we could even afford to buy this place now. And we only bought it a year ago. Because everything's just insane and gets so expensive. Especially near London. Everything's just going up all the time. Yeah, it's... London's... I don't think they realise there's other places. It's just... Crazy prices over there. Yeah, I I, I don't... don't, Like, I I miss living in London because it's fun and stuff. But I don't miss living in London because it was insanely expensive. I mean... I'm now 30, well, almost 35, and I've been to London twice. Once when I was carried by my mother when she was coming home somewhere, I was a couple of months old. I was going to ask, like, Uh, were you in your teens at this point? No. (laughs) (laughs) And the last time was when I went down the end of September to do this 60-hour game webcast. Cool. And... I left Glasgow Airport 
at 7 o'clock in the morning, got into Stansted Airport at about half 8 in the morning, took the train to Victoria yeah. Street, Victoria Cross, something. That sounds about right. And then I got the underground to somewhere else, to the Sega old headquarters. Okay. I think Mastertronic were there before it got knocked down a few months ago. Oh, is it like Farrington or something? Yes, yes, that's it. So I got off there at about nine, ten o'clock, set everything up. The other members of the team came at about three, four in the afternoon. We went out, had a sandwich, came back, started the thing. Then it was about eight o'clock in the morning when I packed everything up on the Monday morning. So I never went out during the, the whole time I was there. Jeez. Packed everything up because they all went, went off the night before because they had to have got to college on the Monday. I packed everything up, got back on the train, went up to the airport for 12 o'clock and got, went back into Glasgow for 3 o'clock and then came straight home and slept for like two nights. Dude, you must be knackered. It's insane. <laughs> It's one of those things where, looking back at it now, I would do things totally different. I would do everyone's together for the first four hours, and then we do it in like four hour shifts, Mm -hmm. so everyone gets rest. Yeah. But when I sort of did it at the actual thing, I think we've got recorded about 58 hours, and I slept about four hours of that. That's ridiculous. And I mean, I was absolutely perfectly fine between hour one and hour, say, 45. Mm. It was only after that I had a complete mental breakdown. (laughs) You know, I think it's when everyone else disappeared and I was sat there on my own. Mm -hmm. I had no one to talk to, no one... And... At that time, it was about two in the morning. So, I, don't, I just completely lost it. <laughs> so, I will say thank you, Nicole. That was great. Thank you for having me. It's a, a pleasure as always, David. And hopefully, in a few months, I will get to try this new game of yours that's supposedly the greatest ever arcade-style mobile racing game. I, I swear to God, you're going to be blown away. It is already way beyond what I thought it could be. It's so much better than we me- we meant it to be. Which I think is good. Yeah, it, it's a good thing. It can only get better. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been it's been a lovely conversation. It's not a problem. Thank you. Cool. Have a, have a great weekend. Same to you. Adios. Do you have trouble sleeping? Tossing and turning all night. Nothing you do seems to help. You're not getting your recommended six to eight hours of sleep each night. Well, now there's a solution. Now there's Fat Cat Fly. With Fat Cat Fly, you'll easily get the sleep that you deserve. Download for free on the iOS App Store, and you're guaranteed to get a good night's sleep with very few side effects, as you help a fluffy kitty eat all the junk food that he wants. Side effects may include sleeplessness and desire for cheeseburgers if erection lasts more than five hours. See a physician. Try Fat Cat Fly today. Visit facebook.com slash fat cat fly because you deserve a better life. So that was our quick chat with Nicole Hunt. So thank you. It was an absolute pleasure chatting with him. His beard was very unkept though. Uh, I think if I was his wife, I think... He's got a young kid, eight months old now. Uh, I assume it's his wife. Uh, maybe just girlfriend, but yeah, whatever it is. If I was her, I'd be saying, if you do going to keep that beard, you have to get it all nicely trimmed down and, you know, shaped and styled or whatever you hell. Because it just looked a bit like Wilderness Jack, whatever you want to call him. So that was the interview there. Um, we're now going to go off and have a little bit of news. So I'll play the jingle now. News, 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 news. 
So that was the jingle for the news. So first of all, the Pokemon Sun and Moon, the new game from the Pokemon company, they've shown off their teaser trailer, which I don't know about any of you guys. I honestly think if you've got no real game to show, then I don't care. You know, but that's maybe just me. Um, I I think it works a lot better when, say, like the Fallout 4 scenario where they showed off the game like, quite extensively, just three, four months before the game came out to buy. Whereas a lot of these other games, they tease them now, then they show them again at E3, and then another four or five months after E3, then they get released. And I think that it's too long. You know, that you need to just show the game. Surely enough, the game itself should be there or thereabouts, sort of done now, if it's coming out at the end of this year. But, anyway. Some more news that I found quite interesting. There's, there was a lot of rumours saying that because of how well Deadpool did, they were going to do a, like a Deadpool X-Men crossover because Fox owns those sort of rights. But they've now sort of like come out and saying that they're saying that there's no Deadpool X-Men crossover in the near future. They're saying that they're going to do like a Cable movie or Cable's going to be in the sequel and then there's going to be an X-Force movie first and then they'll see where they are with everything. Which, you know, I don't know. I, I tried watching the Deadpool movie and I fell asleep. But then again, it's, I guess I do night shift, so it's one of those things where, you know, I have to get it at the right time, otherwise, if I just go somewhere dark and warm, I just sleep. I can't do nothing about it, it just hits me like a brick. So, next up, it looks as though Sony may be making a glove-style controller for PlayStation VR. So I guess they're copying more of the Oculus... Is it the Oculus that's got the... the little ball thing that you put your fingers in, things like that. But... They need to come out and actually say the price of that thing in a release date because the way things are going I don't think it'll come out in the next few months I think they're going to hold it off until like Christmas sort of time when it'll come out then towards you know like basically it'd be a Christmas sort of present for people but I just think it's going to be very expensive but we'll see what happens I tell you what, I've also just seen that one of my favourite movies for the last 10 years or so, The Departed, it looks like uh, The Departed never got a sequel, but basically it looks like a TV series is in the works for it, which, that could be quite cool. Oh my god, new details about the Warner Brothers Minecraft movie. I didn't even know that there were... Well, no, I think I heard about rumours that they were doing a movie, but that was ages ago. So I guess that's reportedly back on. Um, other bits of news. It looks as though Battlefield Five is going to be set in World War One. Anyone excited about that? I don't know. It's one of those things where... I don't know, I just... Yeah, I just don't care anymore. But, I mean, looking over some of the bits of news, there is nothing. I mean, teaser for how C-3PO got his red arm revealed. Does anyone actually give a damn? Because I'm not sure if I do, and I just couldn't be bothered. It's not even worth even looking into, you know, like clicking a link just to see it. I mean, I'm that non fussed about the whole situation so that is the news so I guess what I will do while this is just on I will find my um, I say I will find it oh there it is 
I've got to tidy up my desktop. It's, everything's everywhere. Time travel. Mystical magic. Secret powers. Stardust can save the world. Test your intuition. Solve riddles and fulfill adventurous quests. In the new book, The Power Vested in Me, The Gatherers, Book 1, Volume 1. Available now on Amazon.com. Join the adventure today, because you never know what tomorrow may or may not bring. So, thank you all for listening. Please go to our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk. We have a patron, which is www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. And anyone that signs up for a $2 or more sort of package will receive a free music CD, which we are in the process of doing. We've got about 30 songs finished, and we're looking to cut that down, get rid of some of the the trash, because you always get some dodgy ones when you're making stuff. Uh, we're looking to cut that down to between 15 to 20 sort of songs. Um, we're still looking to get some more artists involved. I mean, I think we're close enough now to sort of say that I've signed a licensing deal with John Hare of Sensible Software fame, and I will be able to include some of the Sensible Software music within the album. I just have to pay John some royalties um, to actually be able to include those on the album. But that should be coming within the next couple of months, so keep things peeled, and hopefully we'll be able to get more information close to the date when they come out. So we have some merchandise like t-shirts, again, we've got some John Hare stuff and some John Hare mugs, things like that, at bluecyborg.com, just search 1UP Gaming. We also have like a little deal with Custom Controllers UK. So go to customcontrollersuk.co.uk, um, order whatever it is you're ordering. As you're exiting, there should be like a a place to put like a, a code, like a discount code, or I don't even know what the hell you call them. But if you just type in there, one up gaming, all one word, then you'll get 10% off your order. Uh, we've got a similar deal with funstock.co.uk, but that code is one up, all one word, all uppercase, and you get 5% off at Funstock. So, on our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk, we've got links at the top of the screen, and that takes you directly to our Facebook, our YouTube, our Twitter. Uh, you can even contact us there, or you can email us at contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. If you want to tweet us, it's at O-U-G official. We have our Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash O-U-G official. And please go to iTunes, give us positive feedback for our podcasts. We have a couple of them up and running now. Looking to do a movies podcast, but I think it'll be like a movies and TV sort of podcast. Um, but we'll see how that goes and see if we can get that going again pretty soon. So, it's been me, David, with episode 142 of the One Up Gaming Podcast. So, again, thank you to Nicole Hunt for coming on and having a really good chat. He showed me his little baby monitor of his child, and it looked really cute. So, hopefully, his next game, which is Maximum Car, will be his bigger hit, or even bigger, than his last one. And he can buy that little baby loads of nice things. So it's been me, David, from World Gaming, saying thank you and goodbye. Hey guys, Justin here. I just wanted to say that I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you a lot. Yes, you in particular, in that way. And I wanted to say, I think you're great. I've always said that about you. And I was wondering, if you think we're great, if you could give us a quick rating on iTunes, we'd really appreciate it. It would really, really help us out in that, you know, podcasty sort of way. And if you're feeling particularly festive, perhaps even a little saucy, maybe stop by our Patreon page at www.patreon.com/ouG 
and see if you can't slip a few bucks our way. After all, every little penny or whatever space money they use in Europe helps out the show. Thanks for listening. OUG Gaming will always be free, but with your support, we can always move forward and always be better.